Bird, you're a cartoonist. I'm Lionheart Cartoon. I'm Aim Spirit. And you're listening to the MBS Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 134. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Rom. Hello, all you happy people. Hey, Rom, how are you doing, man? Long story short, it could have been worse, but thank heavens it wasn't. <laughs> Gotta focus on the positive thing, positive side of things, you know? Alrighty then, alrighty then. Uh, good to know that you're on the positive side of life. <laughs> yeah, can't let little things get in the way. I mean, it is a little thing, nothing big. Yeah. Alrighty Oh, how was your pipes? Are they fixed? We're not talking about that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let us just Rose move on. Rose-colored glasses, everyone. Rose-colored glasses. Indeed. So those two you here are Lionheart Cartoon and Spirit. Hello, guys. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello. It's been a while since you've been here, Spirit. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So before we start, I need to recheck because in my list here, um, favorite character and favorite episodes, they might have changed. So, Lion, your favorite character? Oh, nothing has changed. Everything's the same as last time. All right. Every episode is <laughs> it's Stairmaster still? I still love Stairmaster. It's a good one. All right, all right. Spirit, what about you? Still the same? Absolutely. Discord forever. <laughs> <laughs> You have to talk Discord to make me change my mind. A Discord is best princess. <laughs> yes, yes, he is. Wait, what? <laughs> uh, never mind. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> he what will be the best. Was there something I missed in the show? <laughs> no, 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 no. Never mind. You, you don't. You, it's Discord. He's chaotic, so yeah. <laughs> don't think about it too much. <laughs> so anyhow, things have not changed. So the list has. Uh, the list doesn't need to be changed. That's good. So. I'm going to move on to the next topic and things have changed a bit for my side because instead of going to news, we're going to guest time. So yeah, it's going to be redundant right now. <laughs> Sorry about that. Redundancy. Cool. Indeed. So guys, am um, I introducing yourself to the people who might not know who you are and what you do? Well, I am Spirit and I am one half of Duo Cartoonist. And what do you do? Well, uh... Half of what the new cartoonist does. <laughs> that will be, uh, well, my specialty is um, uh, visual development. So I take care mostly of the storyboards, of the things that we do. Not a very long time, uh, Lion and I have been tackling most of the production uh, 50% together in every stage. And though I am a little bit more um, specialized in the pre production stage, I have recently uh, I started animating as well actively. Alright, so the other half of Duo Cartoonist is? I'm Lionheart Cartoon and I'm the main animator of the of the duo. While Spirit does and can tackle some scenes, I'm usually the one that does the most complicated ones. I'm also the one that works out the layouts, which is the perspective of the scenes and the way they're going to be painted. I also do uh, some of the work in terms of animatic and uh, some of the planning. I try and keep stuff on track. Ah, awesome, awesome. Duo cartoonist. So that name is kind of very popular in the fandom. And the reason is because of Children of the Night, right? And that will be... I think it's still valid, yes. <laughs> Correct. Uh, it has a few views per day right now. But we count on doing more material. Awesome, awesome. So if I do understand right, uh, not only that you're popular for children, you're also the mods for Us Baby Discord. Yes, that will be correct. That was our latest one. I knew of BB Discord for a while now, and um, i seen the Tumblr blog here and there, and I was like, oh, this is fun, this is entertaining. Ah, I'm going to follow it. Oh, thank you for following. No problem. Not that I know that you were the mods for it. I was shocked to know that, what, you guys are the mod? <laughs> like, what? Yeah. <laughs> she came up with them a few, uh, at least last year, I think. No, it was more than two years ago already. For a while, so she came up to she came up with it, and she just decided to roll with it. And with the blog, I mean, it got the character introduced to more and more people. And well, the case of heart attacks just went up. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's very chaotic. But yeah, um, I've seen the blog. I kind of like it. It's really cute and whatnot. And I was shocked to know that you were, you guys were in charge behind the whole thing. And yeah, basically. That was a wow moment for me. And do you know that people have been doing fan art for it, right? Yes. We, I have checked every single piece. They pop up every now and then. They still pop up today. 
Well, uh, of course, obviously. I mean. So have you seen this one? By some, I forgot. I don't know how to pronounce the name. I'm sorry. Salbug. Yeah. This one's new. Yeah, this, this, <laughs> this one's from this week, actually. I remember. I remember seeing it. Ooh, this one's new. So cool. <laughs> I know. Oh my gosh. They, they added the horns. Wait, wait, wait. Is this from this week? Yes. No way. Let's oh my see. gosh. One day, nine hours ago. Oh, don't tell me that it is spawned from the video. Probably. Did it? <laughs> oh. Probably. Well, some stuff spawned. That's so from that you cool. Post- <laughs> stuff on your on your DA and you posted stuff on your Tumblr and he's had quite a following. We even have a plush of him. So. Really? No. Yes. Wow. Yes, there is a. But I would like to, uh, if it's this is going in the interview, I would like to clarify. I have nothing to do with that plush. <laughs> okay. Well, right. It wasn't our decision. That's the thing. Well, there's fan arts. Yeah. Yes. Apparently, there's one being sold in eBay uh, constantly, but it has been. It's not one plush that is being sold. It's a model that has been consistently consistently being produced for two years now. Mm. All right, when all I right. first did the design of Baby Discord, it appeared on me. It was like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Baby Discord is cute. It's really cute. And the concept of the character... You know, I'm going to save that for later because it's a valid question. So how did you come up with the idea? With Baby Discord? Yes. Well, I, uh, I was studying Lauren's style back in the day. This was two years ago, and I was studying and measuring the My Little Pony thingies. So I thought, oh, okay, I really like this character, this concept of Discord. Uh, and I did just out of fun what everybody will do. Okay, what about if I do modifications for the character? How will we look at, as an infant? So I took the Kitty Mark Crusaders design, and I didn't want it to just transform him into a pony or to overcute him. So I started doing groups of threes in his design, for example, for the bangs on his hair, uh, for his little tail. Everything is matched in group of uh, in groups of threes, and it came out in one blow. So out of fun, I decided to publish it on my Nevayan art, and it had a very broad reaction for one single sketch. That was the story of how it generated. People started demanding more and more about how, what is, is this is character? This a, is this a thing? Is this canon? What is this? Where, is this where canon? Did it come what it from? is? Oh, so cute, so cute. Kawaii, kawaii. So <laughs> kawaii. I came up, I came up with a whole story for it, and I started the blog. Oh, okay. So you, you started the blog. So I'm I'm looking through uh, I'm looking through it right now, and uh, the design for Baby Discord is wow, very adorable. <laughs> You can say that this guy's the villain. <laughs> yep, no, yep. he's too cute to be one, but we should point out it's not the produce of Discord and Fluttershy. He's not their kid. He's just Discord turned infant. But mm. I actually really wanted to make that canon. Seriously, people. Discord, Discord <laughs> infant or they're having a song? <laughs> like Discord Junior or Baby Discord? Uh, Which one do you want to be gracious. canon? Oh, God. But still, uh, I do enjoy the blog. It's re- it's a really fun read. Oh, thank you. Well, uh, the objective of the blog was for me to start uh, exploring comedy just a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I had this very cute character. I had very clear what I didn't want to do. I didn't want to do rude jokes or anything harsh with it. Still, I wanted to do comedy without resourcing to slap resourcing to slapstick because you know, hitting a baby like yeah, no, <laughs> that's just... not going to work very well. What about the baby hitting? <laughs> baby hitting people? That's funny. Yeah, about that's the baby hitting. People? Thing. I ha- curiously enough, I haven't encountered one single troll of that sort. <laughs> uh, well, maybe he's too cute to do something about it. But at the same time, why fall into the pit of? the Tom and Jerry or the uh, Roadrunner and Coyote. I mean, those exist already. Mm, so true, why not true. find something new? Oh, true, true. true. That, so that, true. I, I'm looking through the whole page and you guys haven't been, well, technically uh, the blog haven't been out that long, right? It's been, what, since a, a year from now? Oh, no, it has been two years on the round. The thing is that I cannot update the blog as much as I would like ah. to. Because producing the strips, it's uh, a lot of hard work. The blog, uh, I wanted to tell a story, and I wrote Tower of Time, which will be an entire f- um, script for a comic of 30 pages um. to explain the origin of Baby Discord. And it has been published through the blog, so if you search for the link to that, 
it's published on, uh, on film fiction right now. Oh, okay. And uh, I use the blog mostly for experimenting, to be perfectly honest. So I started with a, a very, very sketchy style, very sloppy. Mm -hmm. Then I changed for more colored panels. Then I changed for uh, kind of inking. And it was my, my comic experiments basically done in here. Ah, all right. So why Baby Discord? Like out of all the characters that you could have tried and do why discord well i like the character i like the essence of discord and i like that this character is very very unpredictable when you see discord in the show mm -hmm. you know what's going to happen you know that discord is going to do some kind of scheme that it's he's essentially negative but with the baby form there's this veil of innocence washing upon him so you don't know you want to accept the cute more than you want to accept the villain yet you spend a little bit of mischief from this character and you don't know what is going to happen. It's an absolute bomb of unpredictable. Uh, it's unpredictable. Mm. And the super reason for which I chose him about any other character is because the little thing got a life of his own on the net. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about how I chose it. It's people chose him. <laughs> all righty then, all righty then. So, you, so basically, you just roll with it then. Yeah, I rolled with it. It was like, oh, yeah, more, more, more. more. Okay. <laughs> Maybe well, just roll. Character selected. <laughs> <laughs> All righty then. So I'm looking through the whole page, and I do see the progression that you're talking about from rough sketch to colors and more on. So in terms of story, where are you trying to take this? From what I can see, it's like a one shot of the storyline. It's not that long term. No, it's not a long-term uh, kind of thing. The blog will uh, end at one point in time. When will that end happen? That I don't know yet. Mm -hmm. No spoilers, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> true that, true that. Well, yeah, well, of course, I cannot maintain this forever. It's a fan product, and uh, for several reasons, I cannot be on the fan lines uh, a bit and eternal. Well, but... the, those things have a life after all, and right now, while it's really fun to explore what baby discord could do if you re really did exist and what kind of mischief you would be bringing about uh things have to go back to normal eventually because his state his current state is something that's temporary after all mm -hmm. i see i see so there's a backstory to that okay no spoilers so yeah. i'm looking at the art style here and well from the early stages till the new one there's a lot of progression so in terms of the baby Discord himself and most of the pony characters, they look like show characters. And with the recent update that you guys did, you changed it a bit. So any reason why? Uh, can you take that? The reason for the change in style? Yes. Yeah. Well, baby Discord is, hasn't changed much, mainly because he is already an original character based off of something that exists. But I mean... All characters are based off of ponies from the get-go anyway. But uh, the fact that right now there is a lot of backlash to anyone using anything that is so close to show accurate, we decided to go our own way and create our own design and our own puppet. And not only is it not in Flash, but it's all also, uh, I wouldn't say significantly, but definitely enough so that it it doesn't look like it comes from Hasbro or DHX. There's been a leak in terms of assets from the actual show, and anyone that has something ever remotely close to what's show accurate now, uh, they're part of the Witch Hunters. They're in the Witch Hunters crosshairs as to, oh, you cheated, you used this. So mm. We went another way. We wanted to be slightly safer, both at, on that term and also on the cease and desist term. We didn't want to be um, confusing the audience as to is this part of the show or is it not. The style being that different puts us in a category on the side. All right. So it's a valid uh, change then. So it was done for necessity state, um, necessity sake. Right. Mm. Partly, but you know, it's uh, it was fun to redesign a character like this and still manage to keep the essence of Fluttershy into something that essentially doesn't look like the one that everybody has seen on everybody has seen on the show mm. so that that was really interesting plus it gave us a, a few reasons to amp up the style to something that we kind of 
we don't hate the style that exists, but it gave us, it gave us an opportunity to do something that was slightly more interesting for us. All right. All yeah, right. maybe. Maybe Discord as well as Children of the Night, uh, we cannot uh, profit about these kind of products because they are fan base. Exactly. So uh, we have found another way of uh, making it worth our while, which is experimentation. Mm. Uh, something that we cannot do in studio. So the things that we have learned to do and the things that we have tried with these two things, you wouldn't even believe it. For example, with the comic, with the blog, I discovered a plugin for Photoshop that is called Lazy Nesumi. Oh, yes. <laughs> Why? Right. Because I hated inking. I hate inking with all of my guts. I don't <laughs> want to do the inking ever. So I found a way mm -hmm. of mastering inking without <laughs> expending all of my stamina on that. You mean uh, uh, all of your sanity. Yeah, all of my sanity on it. Because when you are inking, it's, uh, it depends on your skill and your pole. So I found a tool that doesn't require me to be skillful. So yeah, <laughs> since we cannot make anything out of what we are making, we're making the most out of it by teaching ourselves either new skills or new techniques. Mm. Like Fluttershy was all done in Toon Boom, and thanks to that, I managed to learn the program and try new techniques and you know develop some new ways to either light stuff or make some shading. You know, it, it's uh, We're trying to find the best out of this. Mm, okay, so basically it's a learning process. Um, Definitely. You you get to learn how to use the program and you get to entertain people at the same time. Okay, that's yeah. Well, Children yeah. of the Night, after all, was a project to see how far, well, how big of a project can we manage, uh, how beautiful can we make it so that it fits in our portfolio, and how much uh, how, how would be the response to something that is fan made based on a music like this, you know, yada yada yada. Mm -hmm. All the rest is history, I'd say. <laughs> all right, all right. You mentioned a few programs like Photoshop, Toon Boom, and I'm assuming Flash, right? Yep, that so, will be right. So with the recent video that you guys released, which is Chip of Discord, what was that made with? Was it Toon Boom? It was partially Toon Boom. We're in the period of transition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's very likely that by next year we will uh, bury Flash permanently and <laughs> go 100% in Toon Boom for all of our works. All right, so because we have discovered that it's much uh, easier. much better. Yeah, it's more stable. Uh, it's not exactly easier, but it's uh, it's more complete. It's more stable, mm -hmm. and it's um, faster. It's faster. Yes, it's not as intuitive. It's just more efficient. Yes, that would be the correct term. But you know. If, if I may just go back a little bit, uh, mm -hmm. Children of the Night was made using TV Paint, mm -hmm. Flash, Photoshop, After Effects, and Premiere. Whereas this one, I didn't touch anything made ha made by hand like TV Paint. It was all Toon Boom. Uh, actually, Baby Discord and Angel were in Toon Boom, whereas Fluttershy was uh, no. in Flash. Oh. Yes. I'm just mixing myself up. Three, yeah, two, let me help you. <laughs> Baby Discord and Angel were animated by me, and I did them in Flash, while uh, Lion made a big experiment with a puppet on Toon Boom, yes. mm -hmm. and he got in charge of Fluttershy for this production. Fluttershy is 100% Toon Boom. All uh, in there. Oh, okay. Because um, when I, I, I've seen Lion working on the background, sorry, not background, but working on behind the scenes for the animation. I saw him did a few tests here and there, and it was all done in Toon Boom. He even explained how things were um, working working yes. in the background, yes. So, how hard was it to merge the two worlds together? Or is it just, okay, save S and move it to Flash? Well, it's it wasn't that hard, mainly because both Toon Boom and Flash work with frames. So the moment we know which character does which reaction at which frame, everything can be timed. It's essentially as if we both had the same program but everything was already pre-timed for us to work on it. So it wasn't all that hard. Yeah, the challenge wasn't exactly to mix the two softwares because they are both vectorial and they have a lot of similarities. <laughs> the real problem on this production was to learn to boom. Oh. That was very hard. There was a few things I had to, to tweak. I mean, even though uh, the previous production, which even is it, if it isn't ours, was Midnight Mares, and all of that was done in Toon Boom, I still was on a learning curve. And when Fluttershy came around, I had so much more already in my bag of tricks that I could use, and she came out a lot better too. So now you've done animations, you've done videos for it. So where's the next step for Baby Discord? 
Next thing, after Baby Discord, do we risk ourselves to say it? Any spoilers? Do we have something after Baby Discord? Do, I mean, do we have so much stuff already on the back burner. We just yeah. have to choose one. <laughs> we uh, are going to make a test uh, to do the final transition into Toon Boom. Uh, and we are going to try to make a video for this Halloween. Uh-huh. Try, try, try being the keyword here. We have a lot of everything moves super fast lately. It's very difficult to, to keep track of everything, and it's very difficult to start something when you know that you could be asked to stop at any time. Oh yeah, with one or two so, situations, uh, uh, understandable. Yeah, yes. precisely. But the next video, uh, we are going to try the objective, the test in this case, because Definitely. it's all about the test every mm-hmm. time. It's yes. not about the video. It's the <laughs> test. We want to learn. Uh, yeah. We are going to take a popular character that is haven't been animated by the fandom many times that will be Nightmare Moon oh my yes and we are going to make a puppet of her in Toon Boom but she's not going to be like Fluttershy the super object objective that we have if it's possible is to make him is to make a puppet that will behave like a classical Disney drawing Mm, wow. That, 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 wow, okay, those those are bold words. Those are really bold words. It's possible. Yeah. It's possible because we have seen it done before. Okay, I mean... Someone did it before. Someone did it before. Uh-huh. And uh, it's someone which we, I will potentially work for. Uh, but it, it, it is possible. It'll just require a bit more a brain Learning. juice <laughs> All right, I mean, to put together. It's, it's a lot of logistics so, to create a puppet in Toon Boom. Okay, I mean... Um, me, I've seen you work in Toon Boom, and I've seen the characters that you puppeted and move. They move really well. And now, uh, when you say Disney, um, are we talking about classic Disney or modern Disney? I am talking to you about Lion King Disney. Mm, okay. That so a bold assessment. assessment? It, it is very bold, but it's not impossible. It just has well, I mean, the, the like that we drawing. have will match into that category. Probably, it? yes. I, I mean... Yeah. Vectors are a different way of drawing things, and thanks to the way that those program works, be it Flash or Toon Boom, you can just create the colored lines with its colored field and everything and move them around. The advantage that Toon Boom has is that those lines don't have, well, they can be deformed in many different ways, not just skewed, stretched, squashed, uh, zoomed, well, blown up or reduced. You can actually make them wavy if you need to. And that's where the power comes in. So if, if the character has to make some subtle expressions or has to have a, a nice transition for an eyebrow, it's always possible to have it done very smoothly without having to create an infinite amount of symbols. You just ah. have to move those little anchor points the correct way. So it's definitely possible. But it just has to be planned correctly. Whereas I, would, I could draw the character and have it move the way I want, I still have to go through painting the lines, painting <laughs> inside the lines, mm-hmm. and then creating everything so that the, the the shading and lighting would work well, whereas by having everything in vectors, it's a bit more to think about Streamline. before animating, but when you start getting into it, when, when the animation really starts, yes, it is definitely more streamlined. That's the good part of it. So yes, animating uh, Nightmare Moon in such a way would probably require a very specific build for one specific shot. But damn it, that's going to look awesome. If we succeed on that one, because this one is really, really complicated. We have already achieved uh, something that is uh, really special. Mm -hmm. And you know that our short films usually are shaded. Our characters have a a bit of rim light. Yeah, we Mm -hmm. we add rim light for stuff. We're we're probably not going to do that anymore. (laughs) Because... We have found a much, much better way of lighting the characters. Ah. Well, we can still do rim lights, but they're going to look way more cooler. All right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'm, going, cooler. <laughs> I'm going to say this. Uh, no more spoilers because right now um, I'm giddy with joy because like you said, Nightmare Moon by this Halloween. I'm Halloween is end of the month. So whew, you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot, but we are not going to make a very long animation about it. It's going to be only one phrase, Mm -hmm. probably. Yeah, it's it's going to be perhaps 10 seconds or something like that. It's a test. We want to test something, and it's the best way we could think about it. Plus, it'll be like right for the holiday, (laughs) the special celebration. It's going to be good for Nightmare Night. True, indeed, indeed. And well... 
it's here's the thing. Uh, you can never go wrong with Luna or Nightmare Moon. Never can go wrong. Indeed. No, I don't think so. Yep, yep. Yeah. That's pony. Mm, true After this <laughs> Is this got even a pony? Well, he might be half well, pony. has a pony here, head. Yeah. Technically. There's this. I don't know what kind of pony will have that head, but... <laughs> Saudi Arabia? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> okay, but um, here's another thing that I noticed during your latest video, um, Chip, Chip's, uh, Chip of Discord. Um, you have voice actors in the credits. Did you guys got approached or did you approach people for it? I was in charge of the audio for this uh, project, so I took care of casting the voice uh, talents myself. Uh, and actually to give the deadlines to the voice actor, coordinate uh, everything with the musician. And let me tell you something, it was really, really hard. <laughs> it's harder to do the audio than to do the animation. <laughs> well, we're not audio specialists, but uh, Tristan is a really nice guy and his stuff is just awesome. He came up with that score super fast. And even wow. after we had finished the animation, there, there was a little, a few issues with timing because he made the original score on the animatic and s stuff subtly changed oh. from then to now and he was just oh cool it's gonna sound even better this way and was <laughs> always motivated it's, it's gonna look so awesome well it was yeah, it was, it was really a cool. pleasure to work with he, Tristan is the best oh yeah Tristan is the best mm. and, and also the voice of Fatisha and all, and all of the characters is well it, I, I enjoyed it and the score for it was really not bad yeah Tristan did an awesome job by the way, who I, I I seem to forget the voice for um, Felter Shy. Um, who was that again? Meredith. It was Meredith, Meredith Sims. Sims. Mm. So has she done anything else besides this one? Uh, no, we haven't contacted Meredith uh, for any other uh, project right now. Uh, but definitely, if we need a voice for Twilight or for Fluttershy, she will be my first go-to person to for that kind of voice, uh, mm. voice. And the thing is that she contacted us, contacted us once before mm -hmm. for Children of the Night for Gary if I don't if I recall correctly. I don't remember. It's uh, it's been a while. <laughs> well, I think I think she did. That's why I had her contact. Ah, uh, okay. Probably then. All right, all right. So, um you it seems that your next project whatever it is is going to be an amazing one because well you got me all hyped for nothing right now because I am excited for whatever you're going to pull out like, even 10 second nightmare like moon that you're discussing not even doing it discussing has it, got me test, excited that that's what we live for really that's what we enjoy doing because it's uh, we ha like she said we do have to make it worth our while not just for the fandom but for us a little bit too so by learning something new like this we can we the moment we will get our own stuff going at one point We'll have all, everything in our bag of tricks. We could uh -oh. uh, just take the puppets and do flat things uh, in Flash, probably. We mm -hmm. could replicate the show, but we think it's more exciting to try to... Okay, we are going to, to take these further. characters so everybody can enjoy this. Mm -hmm. And we are going to try something that is uh, in the venue of the show. We are not going to be rude. We are not going to be violent here. But let's bend the rules a little bit. Let's go Disney. Can we go <laughs> DreamWorks? Can we go 3D at some point? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think that we are going to go 3D, but... <laughs> I don't think so either. We, we have a lot of fun with what we're doing, but with the extra, uh, the extra techniques and all of that, we can still push a bit further every time. Yeah, every time it's uh, really, really exciting because for... Well, I don't know if you guys have done any animation, but <laughs> if you have, uh, one of the most <laughs> annoying things in this world is to animate a shadow. Oh, oh, I, I've I've oh. been there. I've been there. I've you know um, I, just I, a half shadow on the face. Uh, <laughs> you know the sunlight, sunlight <laughs> at uh, mm. four p.m. Oh, so God, you have no. the volume of the character. Try to animate a head turn with that. Oh God! It's horrible. Even a rim light because you can get jitters very easily. It's it's well. very hard to manage for each shadow level <laughs> that you have. Your animation time doubles. Well, I, I'm not even thinking of shadows. Back in the day when I was in college, I took a flash animation and just trying to animate something without using the tween tool was... Ooh. Yeah, but what, right. if I, uh, what if I told you that there's a way of, of tweening in flash without using the tween element? What sorcery is this? We can't... Yeah, it's sorcery, but... 
when we were doing Children of the Night, I experimented with every extension that I could get my mm. claws on. <laughs> and yes, we have a way of uh, training two symbols, per, two symbols per layer. Yeah, we, we, well, she managed to find a very nice uh, plugin, a very nice command that allows you to tween stuff without having to use the flash tween. And what that tween does also is that it can manage multiple symbols per layer. So if I had, say, all of Luna's uh, front leg on one layer, because it was easier to manage... And it's uh, composed of three symbols. And it's composed of three extra symbols. The moment I make it move from one keyframe to the next, I can tell that it'll plug in to just, well, make a 50% cut right there and then move, move it forward 60%. And it, it would create a keyframe between... In between all those keyframes, it would essentially tween creating a, a single keyframe. Yeah, it's animating in Flash, never more using a tween. Uh, wow. It's a dream for an animator. Oh, animating yeah. a character and having a realistic rim light that it looks hand-drawn and respects the actual volume of the character oh, yeah. without doing it in drawing <laughs> by drawing. That is like the achievement of this month. And it's done. We have a test. We can show you later. We have a test oh, so, that so. works. So yeah. when, the, when, well, yeah, when the show is over, we can sh show you what we came up with. All right. Where, where were you guys when I was in college and doing Flash? I, I we were learning Flash. <laughs> <laughs> we were hating Flash. Oh, God. <laughs> but still... Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I am excited for this. I am excited for whatever you guys are going to pull out next because, woo! That, Take well, those the, animators. Mm -hmm. The great dream is to actually have a, a Disney animation that is based on a puppet. Oh. Well, Disney style, you know, mm -hmm. having all those stretch and squash, having a character that feels like it has a skull, musculature. Imagine My Little Pony, mm -hmm. but Fantasia. Ooh, Think Fantasia. Wow. Well, mm. we almost had that with Fluttershy. When she's talking down with, to uh, Baby D and Angel, she goes, have we now learned that we don't have to fight each other? She, Her face moves a bit more. The way she's rigged, mm. uh, I don't have to, I don't need an extra symbol for the skull. I can just stretch and squash it using those deformers. Same with the mouth. I have like four mouths and I can stretch it open as it's much close. as I need. It's mm. close. It just lacks just a little bit, but I think just that we can bit. do it yeah, for the we next can. one. Yeah, we can. We have new bags of tricks now, so we can uh -huh. definitely make it stretch and squash slightly more if we need to. Oh, okay. But awesome. The golden, golden goal, our moment of uh, of joy and shine will be that if we take a classical animator, we show him, what do you think about this? <laughs> oh, nice drawings. Oh, it's actually a puppet. What? <laughs> That's what we want. It's a cut That's it. puppet. Wow. Okay. I mean, uh, that's the goal for anyone who's in the animation business, trying to show some senpai that how does this look, and he say if it's great. <laughs> yeah. All right. Awesome. 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 So this block has been around for almost two years now, right? Yep. Two years. And how many questions do you receive? Daily. Daily. Uh, I receive uh, about. Uh, that depends on the activity on the blog. If I make posts answering questions, I will receive more. Usually, I receive three per day. Oh, three per and day. And from those three, uh, there is so 30% is, can I hug you? <laughs> can I what? <laughs> hug can you? I give you a hug? <laughs> oh, let me dig. So... That's still awesome, and I'm 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 still stuck with the chief of Discord. That got about a thousand and three hundred notes, and that is impressive. That is stuff uh, is impressive. What? Um, the video for oh the statue Discord. No, no, no. The the, the video yes. on the Tumblr blog. I'm not, I'm not looking at the YouTube's. Yeah, that was an awesome response. I really, really, I'm really grateful to the fans for uh, spreading it so much, and I'm really glad that to be able to put something together that people are apparently enjoying. It is awesome. How was the promotional for this one? Did you guys hype it up, or was it a surprise for anyone else who was watching this? Well, we didn't hype it up. Uh, we told uh, close people that we know that we were working on this as something casual in conversation. But we decide, we have decided not to pull out uh, animatics or mm. to hype anything up before, uh, because we really don't want to attract the legal team's attention. Ah, all right, all right. But that and giving some false expectations as well. The uh, biggest hype was probably the uh, the streams that I made. Hmm. 
And that was, I, I've been there too. And that didn't pull out many people that um, I was hoping for. That what, only under 10? Oh no, it went a bit over 10 after a while, but mm. it's uh, it's best when it's calm. It allows me to concentrate a bit better. Not that nothing gets done. It's just that, well, it's nice to be... It feels like a really nice little club. People uh, know yeah. each other and we banter and we have fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and listen to crazy music. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, because when you hype, people are already having an expectation. And uh, the problem is that for our things, we are very, very experimental. Hmm. So failure is always an option. Ah, yes. All right. So I've also noticed this popped up on EQD. Did you guys promote it? We, Did we? Uh, you, you mean the, he means the post on EQD, probably. Yeah. Well, the staff of EQD are ever so nice to us. Whenever we have something uh, to promote or to, to show off to the community, they often make a little post for us. Seth is awesome, <laughs> and he's so, so kind. Uh, I, can, I don't understand why they are so kind to us, but we are <laughs> really grateful for it. Well, the, I saw that there, and I was like, ah, yes, this is only QD. I am happy for this. <laughs> Let's see what they say. Yeah, they are they are adorable. They are absolutely awesome. Well, the response was actually pretty good too. I mean, we didn't get too much flack about the the design choices. We didn't get too much flack about Baby Discord, even though it's actually in the description. You know, uh, people were, were really accepting of what we did there, and yes, that, we, that we was got really, uh, really nice. one constant comment. Uh, it's probably that the humor was a little bit uh, weak because it was too short. We want more. <laughs> uh, yeah. They, they don't was, seem to was, understand that animation takes a lot of work. Well, it takes work, it takes time, but it wasn't meant, meant to be something long. Uh, we didn't expect it to work as well as it did anyway, even though, it, okay, we have a name and all that, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that everything we'll do will always work. It's not like we're Pixar. <laughs> uh, oh, even Pixar so has their downsides. Even Pixar has their downsides. Sure. True. Besides, true. for just for this thing, even if it was a pony-related project, how many things could have gone wrong? Could have, could have gone wrong. First of all, we chose to boom and flash together. It oh had God. exploded in our face. We had baby Discord. We had Angel, a different style of Fluttershy. We you know? had to change the design of Fluttershy. Even yes. if we had a puppet of Fluttershy in Flash already, we had to scratch that and. Mm -hmm. Start again in Toon Boom, changing a main character, changing the Lauren Force design. Oh my god, <laughs> I was terrified. You know, it's almost like blasphemy. So making something longer without knowing what the response would be, we could have just ended up with a bomb and, uh, well, with a dud, I should say. With We could have ended up with a dud and spent uh, another six months working on it. We'd be proud, but the response could have been bad. And now we have something short with a very good response. So we kind of feel good about pursuing something further later on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And well, from what I heard you guys told me previously, it's that Disney style Nightmare Moon. Done. Full stop <laughs> there. I, I, the interview over there. The, we, we'll end on that. Like, oh God, this is... Uh. Yeah, like with painted backgrounds. Not vector with gradients. No, no, yeah. painted. Oh my, oh, height meters. Oh that's, no. Okay. Let's say that's one of our best strengths right now. Well, we're going to have the painted backgrounds, the classically animated effects, probably, if we include any. Uh, very, very special way of lighting, lightning things that it's already developed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And potentially a, a puppet. So, I got nothing more to ask because right now I'm just hyped for Nightmare Moon. <laughs> <laughs> so, has there been anything that I missed out? Because I'm sure I have. Mm. What could you have missed? I mean... Uh... We'd have to have shown something for you to have missed something. I, I yes, don't know. The only thing that is left is to actually uh, show screen and probably show you the test that we did with the lightning. Mm. Because we are kind of very, very proud of that little test. Yeah, we won't give off all of the details. No, just saying really. that we have new lighting technique. <laughs> well, I guess you need to be here for that then. Well, too bad, audience. Maybe you just have to wait. It's end of the month, it's not that long. Let's pray they finish it on time. <laughs> but anyway, uh, once again, thanks guys for coming on and sharing your information about Baby Discord and the animation that went behind it. Because when I first saw clips of it on the live stream that you did, I was hyped. And when it was finished, I was even more hyped. So Aww. 
Thank you guys for creating the video. Thank you guys for doing an awesome job at it. Well, if you want to know more about this character, the story is available on Vivation. Yeah, I, I uh, put the link up on the uh, Skype chat. Alright, I'll add that too into the show notes. But yes, anywho, thank you guys once again. And let's move on to the next okay. topic. So next topic is going to be news time. Can you join us? Yes, well, I can. can. Can you? Yes, All right. I can. Yes, we will be here. Yay! Awesome news. Rom, your time. Excellent. Dun, 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 dun. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Romeo Alt of the MBS Show News Time. And in today's news time, amazing looking pony plush sold at Toys R Us Spain. Recently, the Spanish Toys R Us website updated their inventory with some amazing looking pony plush by Famosa. Famosa, is that how you pronounce it? Famosa. Yes, thank you. There are two versions of the plush the 40 centimeter for 31.99 euro and 25 centimeter for 15.99 euro. So, if you live in Spain or know anyone from there, you can always ask them to get them for you. Links can be found in the show notes below. Yes, the Formosa plush do look really, really good. And yeah, this ole! From... <laughs> ole! And I this is Spain. where... <clears throat> and this is where our friendship with James will be <laughs> beneficial. Indeed! Well, you know, you know, Rom, um, Spirit is from Spain. You really? Know? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah. even better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. is not a bad toy house. Actually, they did a good work with these splashes. Yeah, I, I, I'm looking at it right now, like the 25 centimeter Fluttershy plush. And uh, oof, I don't read Spanish, but it says 70. Gastos de envío gratis. Por comparación para el año, es sentido. Hasta en guastos de envío. No idea what that means. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where are you reading that? I can translate that for you if you it's, want. It's Ofertas this, especiales. It's Gastos de envío gratis por comprar superiores a 70 euro hasta 20 euro en gastos de envío. A special offer, uh, the shipping will be for free in purchases that exist 20 uh, euros. Oh. All right, okay. So, wow, I, I'm looking through the whole page and it seems that these toys are super, super popular. Be- oh, Superior to seventy euros. Hey, that's expensive. Well, well yeah, you, you need, need to seventy euros yeah. to get a free, a free shipping. shipping. Yeah, mm. yeah. But still, but still, you can still buy it at the store. I believe. I hope you could. But still, look at the plush. It's like well, currently right now on the website, it's only a uh, flattish twenty-five centimeter plush. Looks like um, flattish. <laughs> Why does no one like flattish? Oh, she's awesome. I know. Get me on that one. <laughs> but. Still, Still, but still, um, I'm I'm sure that they're going to restock and everything's going to be awesome. And Famosa is, if I do remember right, they sell it at other stores. So if you do stumble upon one, go take a look, see, and buy one because they look good. So, Rom, what do you think, man? So much want. So much want. <laughs> uh, well, you could order them on Amazon, probably. I don't know. Or you could ask James, James, why are you not here? <laughs> there are many ways to get something. Mm, true, true. <laughs> it just depends on the price, how much you're willing to spend. Ah, that is also true. What about you mm. guys? What about you guys? I think that the best that they have is Fluttershy. Mm. Right in here. I think it's the best pulled out. What do you think, Rich? Pinky looks weird. Flutters yeah. looks kind of nice. Uh, if I take a look at the EQD post, uh, Applejack doesn't look too bad, but Probably, it, I guess it depends on when the plush was made, if it was the first in the line or whatnot. Pinky mm, looks like a dude. Really? Seriously. <laughs> the mohawk. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, it looks like a dude because her mane is too short on the neck. <laughs> Maybe mm. they started making the core and they figured, well, let's make Pinky instead. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but still, uh, I do like the plush. I mean, if. If there's a possible way for me to get them, I'll probably try one. See, eh, I don't know. But yeah, um, plush available out there. Like the Formosa plush looks good. If you are willing to spend a bit more, the 4DE plush, I totally recommend them. They really look good. But anywho, on to some less nice news. Rom? Roger that. 
MP comic writer Ted Anderson possibly let go at IDW. Last week at, la at the latest MLP annual 2014 comic was published, the writer for the story Ted Anderson did an annotation or behind the scene talk for the comic. When talking about some of the cameos that he added into the comic, one character stood out. Upon further research, the owner of the character was known for their anti-brony, anti-phantom, and general social justice warrior comments. When asked, Ted Anderson's answer was less than favorable. People then contacted IDW and Hasbro about the matter. IDW has issued an email reply saying that the writer definitely does not speak for IDW, nor will he work here again as a result of this. Links can be found in the show notes below. <laughs> Paul, yep, true that, true that. Yeah, but still, oh boy, th this is not one of those news that I like to cover. But this is really... S how do I put this? Uh, yeah. Edgy. Yeah, I won't use edgy because here's the thing. One person's opinion is his own. But when he does something similar to this, this is not right. For him to put certain characters, put certain things inside the comic that um, most people read and enjoy and for him to uh, bring it back to that it's not a nice feeling it's not nice in general i wish james was here because he knows more about this and i just know snippets of it if you really want to explore or understand go to the link in the show notes and read the whole thing because it's not nice. Rom, what do you know about this? Mm, well, ne I never heard of this before. Mm, all right. And you guys? kind of flew under my radar, too. Mm. Uh, I, I heard about it from, from Spirit when she told me, well, some guy from IDW got a problem. Mm. Thing is, sometimes when you add some characters, you kind of have to do some research. I, I was looking at a, uh, a top the fourth wall video, mm -hmm. one, you know, with Linkara on the uh, well. Little special. I, I won't go into the. Yeah, I think so, but yeah. I, I won't go into the details. In you know, it's, it, I, I won't. I don't endorse the guy or anything. I love what he does, mm -hmm. and he was making a video on how he had to do a comic review because somehow. <laughs> the artist managed to put him into the comic. So, I put you in there. You have to do a review now. <laughs> no, I um, think that one was just a general joke about it. But, yeah. Yeah, but still, you know, it's... Uh, probably that artist did some research and figured, well, yeah, that guy is not edgy. It's probably okay to put him in there or perhaps a version of him. Uh, they knew what they were doing. But at the same time, it's kind of strange. It's not someone really from the community. It's... Uh, it's very difficult to pin because it's not something that's that, it's something that's fairly new to do. I, I I've known some I've read some comics where the author put some of his coworkers in there, but they were coworkers. They worked there, and it was not in necessarily in a bad light either. But he knew the person personally, and he thought it's that it's a nice wink. But mm -hmm. there, uh, I have no idea. I don't know why something like this would happen, especially if you normally do a bit of research. No, I. I think that with this Ted Anderson knew 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 about it. I I'm just talking in. I'm sorry. I'm just assuming here, so I don't have the mm -hmm. full right to say anything about Same it. Same here. So it could be. Well, evidence is in the link. Like I don't want to point fingers. It's just that. Yeah. But spirit, what do you think? Well, this. It's a very, very, very complex situation. I think that it's very sad that he lost his job. Mm -hmm, and, probably. yeah, uh, I am not going to enter in the debate of the things that he liked or he didn't like. Mm -hmm. Because whatever floats your boat, that is not my concern. And since I believe in the individual freedom to follow or like whatever the, you want, uh, I won't judge even if I don't agree with what he's choosing. However... It's a problem today. It's a problem of today. It's what the what are you posting on the internet? What are you publishing mm -hmm. under your name? And it, that's an entirely an entirely different story. When you are publishing, especially on a large publication house like EDW, it's no longer about you. It's about the production and it's about politics at some point. 
So if you decide to choose this, and it's something that it's very steering for some people, it's uh, it's uh, something that is edgy, politically speaking, and many followers, especially when you offend the parents and you are doing a product for, chil for children, you are in trouble. You are in deep, deep trouble because if the parents get offended, your product is, uh, is going to lose respect and mm. audience very fast. Your client is not the child. Your, cli uh, your client are the parents. Mm -hmm. Most likely. Most in. So Probably. if he decided to uh, put this kind of reference in one of the comics... Uh, it falls under his responsibility. If he further wanted to do post on the internet and do freedom of of expression, he has to take in account. Uh, people has to take in account that they are public figures and they are going to be judged in an entirely different uh, light that an employee will be mm, true, judged. True. And uh, today, for example, imagine that someone is on company X, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's something that is very typical for, for the news today. An employee gets mad and bends in Facebook about his boss. Uh -huh. He gets mm -hmm. fired. This is one example of that. Mm -hmm. On another scale, on another venue. Oh, that's he, true. he works for IDW, and essentially he is their representant in terms of what he publishes, what he puts on. Mm -hmm. So if he decided to do and go at it this way, sadly they don't want that kind of image. So it's... True that, true that. I, I totally Something agree with what happen. You, yeah. I, I totally agree with what you guys are saying and I do believe that a person has the choice to believe or like whatever they want, no matter how right or wrong it is. Because right and wrong is based on the person's morale. Correct. True. So as for Mr Anderson's um situation here right now, he believes in whatever he believes in. And most of the community don't. So, yeah, I can't say much. Yeah, it's a very edgy situation. It's very, very hard because uh, it's a matter of, uh, on the one hand, it's freedom of expression. On the other hand, it's freedom of expression on a very determinate channel. And it doesn't matter what he believes in. It comes down to that, to what do you post on the internet and what do you publish on a national uh, print comic. True, true. Talking about figureheads or public figures, like the four of us here right now, we're technically public figures for our little fandom or little communities of sorts. Like you guys are animators, I'm a podcaster. Rom here is also a podcaster. If we were to say something that is not right, representing the show or representing our brand that would be a detriment to our image. People will say bad things, people will not like, or people will support, or whatever they believe in, or even for support. So, And if it falls in the wrong hands, we could put other people in mm. very bad light too, because then again, there's always some people who will be very, very happy to have some dirt on a particular fandom or group of people to try and bring them down. True that, true that, true that. So, in the end, you have to be responsible for what you say. Take this line from Bambi. If you can't say nothing nice, don't say nothing at all. Yeah, that's a very good philosophy. Yep. Indeed, indeed. Well, sometimes something something that's not nice could also be the truth, and not saying it could hurt a lot more people. But that really, you know, it falls in the gray zone, where mm. judgment is also part of your current ethics. It's something very delicate because yes. the larger your audience, the more responsibility falls upon your shoulders. And sometimes even the most innocent statement that you did with no mean intention can blow up in a huge bomb. Example, in Chip of Discord, I gave a chocolate chip cookie to a bunny. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, I really, really hope that no child ever will try to do that to their pets. Don't give chocolate to your pets, kids. It's oh, not a good idea. That is dumb. I can't say much about that because most of my cats don't eat chocolate. <laughs> Ours will sniff it, but we're still trying to keep it away from it. But nevertheless, you know, it's uh, sometimes saying something nice could be a lie too. But that that's outside of uh, the subject. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you never the... know the repercussions of what you are going to say. But at least, uh, what is the responsibility of every author is giving as much thought as possible mm. about what we are going to say next. Yes, and true, which true. consequences is going to imply. Stay diplomatic. <sighs> yes, Stay that is true. That is true. And well, with his uh, cameo thingy, 
I think he's just he was just trying to be nice to this blogger or whoever this person was. I mean, we all sometimes when we do our own things and let's say we have uh, this kind of power, quote unquote, we can add in things we want and whatnot. For example, during uh, the episode um, trade, yeah, we can see two Bioshock ponies inside there. So that was kind of cool because the fandom are kind of interested. And also the... Everyone has that kind of mm, stuff, yes. And the big Lebowski ponies. Hey, that's cool. And that's in show. But when you look at the comics, they have even more freedom because in the comics, you got Iggy and... Uh, Iggy and Izzy, uh, Izzy, I forgot no idea from Led Zeppelin. I forgot the name. And also, you got like the Vigors and Fighter Chambers from the Bioshock thingy in the background with the name same. Like, those are the things that we want to see. Those are the things that are kind of funny. When you insert original characters, that's going to be a grey line. <laughs> Well, yeah, yes and no. Look, for example, um, at Let's Go and Meet the Bronies, Mm -hmm. which we worked on with Jan, uh, we added, just in the audience, when Delancey Pony talks, okay, we put Derpy in there, but there's Egon in in pony form, Egon from the real Ghostbusters in there. Uh, At first we wanted, well, I had an idea to add Gordon Freeman as a pony (laughs) in there too. There's a pony in there where her name is L'Oreal because she's worth it. (laughs) <laughs> uh, there's one that's called Bauhaus and even at the end you can see a little part of my own OC, my Sphinx in there just off the screen very very subtly we <laughs> added stuff in there because it was fun mm-hmm. and we usually you know, had Flufflepuff existed I don't know, maybe but I'm not sure we probably maybe, wouldn't have gone this far yeah, if Flufflepuff would have existed back when maybe we would have made a wink to Flufflepuff but God knows if that will have steer some kind of drama. Probably. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, we were kind of careful about what we put in there. But we, we had a lot of ideas for characters to put in there, too. We had ideas for a Pegasus and an <laughs> Earth Pony called Love and Tolerance. <laughs> we already we even had designed the cutie marks for it. There was a, a doctor called Flatline. <laughs> and we had a pony in there, super stressed. The super stressed pony that's in there, his name is called Deadline. <laughs> yeah, we made a, lo- a ton of references. No, Backburner. I think it was called yeah, Backburner. Yeah, Backburner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Backburner and Deadline, which was always stressed. And we had Dr. Flatline somewhere <laughs> in the We invented, had a but... ton of uh, reference material. Most of them were original and humorous. Yes. And probably we wouldn't have been able legally to release any of their names because there was one called Nescafe. I can see that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. No, Nescafe, we... we put her. She, she's the uh, moderate. She, yeah, she's the hipster. My point is that... Pega sister. Uh, yes, that's... That's true. That's true. No, she, mm-hmm. she's not the hipster one. He's another one, but doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah. Uh, besides the point, the thing is that with the things that we did, we were already... With those references, it's like, okay, we are going to make the pony, and it's going to be this humor. This is kind of an internal joke. Mm-hmm. We are never going to release the names under the name of the studio because there will be legal trouble. We were very aware yeah. of what we were doing, and we were thinking about the possible repercussions. So... When we chose Egon from the Ghost, uh, Ghostbusters, and we didn't chose Gordon Freeman because Gordon Freeman was a violent one. Mm. It's a more violent one, and it and the fact that the real Ghostbusters and all of that were actually properties of Hasbro that worked kind of in our yeah. favor. Plus, uh, if I take a look at uh, the Ghostbusters comic that I have here, which is also yes. produced by IDW, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the artist in there, Dan Schoenig, had a lot of winks to the real Ghostbusters uh, TV series. <laughs> There's a, a baby Egon inside of a cradle, or mm. a a little. Uh, the well, point is that yeah, we chose there, our anyway. references very carefully, mm. and every cameo was chosen with very, very good care. Yeah, we we got permission to use the yeah, Terra before, the Terra Strong pony. Yeah, before publishing that. anyone, we actively asked for permission, mm-hmm. and we asked uh, Raven, the ex storyboard artist from uh, the show, mm-hmm, if mm-hmm. we could uh, put her character. We didn't receive a response. She was busy or something like that. We didn't include her. No permission, well, no way. We got permission for Sibsi to use... Uh, well, her character is also in the show, but nevertheless, that was asked. We asked Palette Swap as well. She has a yes. Tumblr. We asked her. She's in... Uh, She's the one that just goes go down with their ships. She slaps the the stallion that's th- that's writing shipping <laughs> stories. Uh, you know, we have wings left and right just because mm. we could and we asked permission to do it. Mm. But we also knew that these kind of things were, would not be seen as bad. Mm, true, true, true. I mean, 
even with, even with the Nescafe, that one is like okay, you could insert her in, but don't tell people her name. Let the fandom make up her name for her, and like even Colgate. Colgate is a brand, uh, but people yeah, call yes. yeah. It's people still but it's call a fandom her? thing. It will yeah. have been different if under the name of the studio for which uh, the Brony documentary was done, we will have said, mm-hmm. "Hey, look at this new pony. Her name is Nescafe." <laughs> like, and let the legal Yeah, it was the same thing with Dr. Hooves. He was called Dr. Hooves with W H O O, but instead Hasbro put it Dr. Hooves H O O V E S instead, just because Dr. Who is already a property. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But you know, it's kind of nice to have a wink like this, and they, they went, well, let's call him Doctor anyway. But and Dr. even for Hooves. those which, which were absolutely minor, one second of the screen time, we chose very, very carefully. And in yeah, most cases, we names. rather create a brand new thing based on a joke, mm-hmm, for mm-hmm. example, the shampoo thing <laughs> or the bow house, yeah. than uh, that picking someone from the community. That, mm. that, that is uh, yes, that our choice. We're not saying that it's a bad practice to have, but if you choose someone from the community, you have to choose very carefully. Mm-hmm. Okay, who is this person? Which politics that this person entails? Uh, how is perceived by the community? Do we have permission? Mm, true that, true that. There, there's a lot of grey lines there because, for example, in Mr. Anderson's case here, the creator didn't mind it. She was happy about it. So, yay, that's good on that part there. But the views and alignment of that character is not on the positive side. So, that's a downside there. So, I mean, it's a Catch-22 situation where if you don't really pay attention that much, yeah. Yeah, it, it cannot go blown out of proportion. But again, when you are doing this kind of job and you have a rather large audience mm. and you are no longer an individual who's making drawings for fun you are an employee for a company mm, and you true. you represent that company represent that company that you, you have make. a lot of responsibility on your shoulders so every decision that you make has to be made very carefully mm-hmm. and probably supported with a board of people true i mean even with this case he it's not even um a joke or anything like that it's just a cameo like it's just a background character in the background like if you don't really pay attention, you don't pay attention. If Here's another thing. If he didn't point it out, nobody would have noticed it at all. Probably. Absolutely. But the comic has a certain quality and a certain audience. And the problem is when something is well done, it's no longer about the filmmaking or the comic making. It's about politics. Don't yeah. ever give an excuse to people to start politics. Yeah, I mean, that's... It's that. never going to end well. Oh, true. I mean, that's never. that and... Well... I, I think we've beaten this horse to death now. I mean, we're technically yeah. beating a dead horse. But in the end, in the end, kids, please be safe. Please, what's the word I'm looking for? Think before you press that enter key. Like, read it aloud and think, do you really want this to be read? And reread again until that you are positively 100% happy with what you are trying to say or do. Because repercussions would come back to you. It might be positive, it might be negative. So, be careful. Yep. That's very good advice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Thank you. So, anywho, with that out of the way, Rom, take us out. I'm Romy all the NBA Show News. Back to you, Norman. Thank you, thank you. you <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have not slept yet, so that's good. So, anywho... <laughs> On to the next topic, shoutouts. My shoutout goes to you guys, dual cartoonists, Lion and Spirit. Thank you for being on. Thank you for being an awesome guest. And thank you for all the hard work that you do. You guys deserve all the acolytes. Is that the word, acolyte? Accolade, maybe? Yeah, acolyte. Accolade. Yeah. Not sure. <laughs> Me, English, good. All the hugs. Yes, indeed. And thank you, seriously. You guys do an awesome job. I can't wait for the next one. You heard yeah. it first, ladies and I'd, gentlemen. I to be here. <laughs> awesome, awesome. And thank you, Rom, for coming on and reading the news. My pleasure. And you, Rom, any... Hi, Mom! <laughs> uh, <laughs> no more? No. Alrighty, then. And, Lion, shout-outs for you. Of course, everything goes to the community. Without them, really, we don't have any... Well, we wouldn't have as much inspiration... And we wouldn't probably be making all of all of that that they see. It's uh, it's always awesome to be part of that. All right, all right. 
And Spirit? Shout out. Well, thank you, you, you all guys. You are awesome. And with no audience, there's no reason to do an animation or anything. Yeah, exactly. Everybody. Norman rocks! <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're, too, you're too kind, you're too kind. And if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshow at gmail.com. You can also reach us on Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at mbshow. Studio bot is kind of happy this week. There's no cursing for James. That's good. And you can catch me at Norman Sanzo. Recently, I tweeted about stuff that I like, which is Magic the Gathering. Yeah, I've been playing a lot of Magic. <laughs> and you, Rom, where can I reach you? You can find me at my Twitter, RomeoLZ69, or at my Tumblr, ReliciousGallery.tumblr.com. Awesome, awesome. And where can they reach you guys, Dual Cartoonist, Lion, and Spirit? Well, you can reach us on the Dual Cartoonist YouTube channel, and you can reach me either at, at R-S-I-R-O-I-S on Twitter or LionHeartCartoon.DivineArt.com for my DA page. Mm-hmm. You can always reach the Ask Baby Discord blog in Tumblr, and I will be there trying to respond in a flutter shy voice. <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> Yay. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. I'll put that in the show notes. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also, like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebook. You can also catch us on PonyvilleLive.com. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Romeo Ald. I'm Lionheart Cartoon. And I'm Spirit. And we'll see you guys next week with probably a little more Discord or Chaos. I don't know. It, it, it depends on Discord's mood. Uh, no, please don't come. Oh god, no. <laughs> Anywho. Uh, bye bye. Later. The farm's been doing fine since the spring began. As good as any other year Sales are going steady And we're working hard Nothing's really changing here I tend your garden every morning Just the way you taught me long ago Flowers still remind me of the song you used to sing When we were out there working hours all alone What I wouldn't give to have you back for just a day I miss the way you'd smile when I was scared All I want to say is that I hope that I can be shining star that you both were to me apple blooms a little bigger every day had no idea how quick she'd grow lately she's been learning who she wants to be could really use her mama though Max sings with the choir every Sunday First thing that he's done since you've been gone Granny's slowing down but she's still every bit as strong As the days when we'd throw horseshoes on the lawn But I wouldn't give to have you back for just a day I miss the way you'd smile when I was scared All I want to say is that I hope that I can be The shining star that you both were to me
just today. I missed the way you'd smile when I was scared. All I wanna say is that I hope that I can be the shining star that you both were to me. All I wanna say is that I hope that I can be the shining star that you both were to me. For example, just a little tidbit. If you take a look at the credit sequence mm -hmm. and you take, for example, the last frame before baby, the Hypno Baby Discord in the first frame of it, you're going <laughs> to yeah. notice that the sun actually sets. Oh, it's I'm very, done. very subtle. But the sun sets in the credits. The, oh. the room gets slightly darker. <laughs> the sun moves in the window and the lighting uh, goes over Fluttershy. Everything moves in there. It's just very, very subtle. For some wow. reason, everybody looks at it, too. But Ooh, they wow. don't notice I, okay, that I need to watch again. And I just remember what I wanted to ask. All right. So, three, two, one. Stop breaking my things. I'm not breaking anything. Yes. <laughs> now it's stuck in there. Don't say that in an interview. They don't know what I broke. Um... She was playing with a, 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 a little pot of glue that I, read, I had right next to me. I swear to God, it, it just was like that. Thing. I and just it, was playing it with it. it. It has a little um, nozzle in a slip form, but the way that the, the cap is made is that it's made to clean up the little nozzle when you put the cap in, and she thought that this thing was screwing on and off, so she just twisted it and, oh, and God. It stuck the little nozzle cleaner inside it, and because uh. it's glued there, oh. I can't do anything about it. Yeah, you can always cut the bottom in half and look <laughs> through the rest of the Yeah, well... You, you know, that's a plan that won't work. <laughs> Well, it's chaotic, so it's maybe this course plan, so why not, right? Yeah, all is this course plan. No, stop playing with my glue! <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Sorry. I'll repair it somehow with epoxy and all this stuff. <laughs> Figure <laughs> that out, you know, repairing a pot of glue with more glue. <laughs> Yay! Duct tape. Duct tape, yep, duct tape. No, duct tape won't work for this. Duct tape is invulnerable. <laughs> uh, anywho, three, two...